Hello and welcome to Wilderness Days. Relocating animals from one national park to another is never easy and the chances of success always remain slim. Now, in the first of its kind operation in India, bisons are being relocated from Kana National Park to Bandhavgar National Park. The same Bandhavgar from where bisons disappeared mysteriously over a decade ago. Relocating a species from one forest to another. More so when the latter has lost it due to any reason is never easy. For example, both Panna and Sariska National Parks lost all their tigers. But while the tigers shifted to Panna have started growing in numbers, the fate of the relocated tigers in Sariska still hangs in balance. Now, in a lesser known but equally significant development, the Madhya Pradesh Forest Department has embarked on an ambitious mission. It involves relocating bisons to Bandhavgarh National Park. Till about 1995, bisons were a plenty in Bandhavgarh, and after the tiger, the star attraction of the national park. Herds of bisons, or gore as they are commonly known, could be seen in this beautiful forest at any time of the year. And then, suddenly, bisons vanished from Bandhavgarh. The entire lot of them. The reasons for their abrupt departure is still not clear. But their absence left a gaping hole in Bandhavgarh. Last year, the forest authorities acted on an action plan which has no precedence in India. And since there is no record and therefore no mention of a properly laid down procedure of relocating bisons in a forest from where they vanished. The Madhya Pradesh authorities are taking the help of animal experts from South Africa. The bisons being relocated in Bandhavgarh are brought from Kanha, another world-famous park in Madhya Pradesh. When the first batch of 19 bisons arrived in the Magadhi zone of Bandhavgarh in 2011, there was palpable tension in the air. The truck was placed in the large enclosure where all the bisons will be kept for some time. The first to get off the truck was a young calf. She emerged gingerly from the vehicle and bolted immediately into the interior of the enclosure. Perhaps in keeping with the importance being attached to the project, Madhya Pradesh authorities are, for the first time, seeking assistance from international experts. The experts, both Indian and South African, appeared happy at the result. This program is called Kanha National Park. We have brought 19 bison to Bandhugar. Now, in the next one or two years, we will bring more people to the population. After that, we think that this population will be here. It will be very low from here. The project has been a fantastic example of state cooperation between the South African Conservation Authority has been a fantastic example of state cooperation between the South African Conservation Authorities at EKZ and Wildlife. Uh, the Madhya Pradesh Forest Department and the private sector uh, being us as facilitators. The whole process of a translocation doesn't just start at an, and end at the immobilization. It's going to end when these animals are released and finally reproduced. Till date, three lots of bisons have been relocated to Bandhavgarh and three more will arrive here shortly. The Forest Department of Bandhavgarh is also trying to find out the exact reasons which led to the bison's disappearance in 1995. This is vital because if similar conditions and circumstances persist in Bandhavgarh even now, then the eventual success of this unique experiment would always be in doubt.
Before being freed in the forest ranges of Bandhavgarh, the bisons are made to spend at least a month in this enclosure. The idea is to blunt their extremely sharp homing instinct. Authorities believe that if released immediately, the bisons would walk back to Kanha, their original home 300 kilometers away. A dedicated team of scientists from the Dehradun based Wildlife Institute of India is keeping an eagle eye on the bisons. Apart from keeping a track on the bisons, the team members are also collecting valuable data on their ability to survive in the new forest. They believe the information will come handy in case such relocations are dried out in other parts of India with other species. The Madhya Pradesh authorities seem to have done sufficient groundwork before embarking on the ambitious program. In 2011, a detailed technical report was prepared, which covered all foreseen possibilities and risks in the operation. The report points out the three main implications of the bison's disappearance from Bandhavgarh local extinction of an endangered species, loss of gene flow and fragmentation. The 71-page report stresses that Bandhavgarh continues to be an excellent habitat and can therefore still support a reasonable gore population. The good news is that out of 19 bisons shifted to Bandhavgarh so far, 17 are still surviving. Two of them were killed by tigers. But in a forest, this is a usual phenomenon, points out Bandhavgarh field director C.K. Patel. Bandhavgarh had a very small population of gores uh, since beginning. And uh, we had maximum number of 39 in 1990. And suddenly, uh, by 1995, the entire population wiped out. The reasons uh, were not known because uh, uh, we were not studying at that point of time. Uh, then we thought that such a huge animal should be reintroduced into Bandhavgarh again. The Madhya Pradesh authorities plan to relocate at least 31 more bisons in Bandhavgarh throughout 2012. So far, the relocation has given desired results. And the hope that this experiment can be replicated with other species in other areas. Let's take a small break now and then we will fly together to the kingdom of birds. Bharatpur is often referred to as the bird's paradise. Bird lovers from all over the world come here at regular intervals. Let's see how this world famous place stands now in the wild landscape of India. Among wild lifers, there is always this question which begs an answer. Who comes to Bharatpur more? Birds from all over the world? Or people from all over the world to watch these birds? Whatever the answer, no one can deny that Bharatpur in Rajasthan is the quintessential kingdom of birds on planet Earth. A world heritage site it's nothing short of a miracle, a man-made miracle, in fact. Home to 
130 species of birds. Bharatpur is in full bloom during winter. From mid-November onwards, migratory birds, mainly from Europe, start arriving in large numbers. And then, by late December, the number of species swell to over 350. A man-made sanctuary, Bharatpur came into existence over 250 years ago when Maharaja Surajmal, who ruled the city from 1726 to 1763, created a dam, Ajan Bund in the area. The effect of the Bund was quick and dramatic. The natural depression in the region was soon flooded and formed several water bodies and wetlands which became the prime attraction for the birds. Bharatpur is also known as Kyola Deo National Park, named after this Kyola Deo temple of Lord Shiva, situated within the park. And one can find birds everywhere in Bharatpur, in marshes, wetlands and scrub forest, which makes most of the sanctuary. Mostly tourists come here only for bird watching purpose. So this is the main attraction points here. We have 375 species birds, 200 migratory, 100 local migratory, and 75 residential. Not only birds here, you can see many animals here. We have 27 species animals and 14 species snakes. Bharatpur's history before 1971, when it was declared a protected sanctuary, was equally remarkable. The successive rulers of Bharatpur used the sanctuary as their hunting ground. From 1860 onwards, the rulers would organize annual duck shootings for their British masters to keep them in good humor. And these were no ordinary hunting parties. On one such shoot in 1938, on November 12 to be precise, Lord Linlithgow the then Governor General of India killed 4,273 birds in a single day. But if people like Lord Linlithgow converted Bharatpur into killing fields for their pleasure, there were others who came as saviors for the birds. One of the most prominent among them was Salim Ali popularly known as the Birdman of India, late Salim Ali, the die-hard friend of birds and an ornithologist of international repute, exerted his personal influence on the Indian government to declare Bharatpur as a sanctuary. His dream came true in 1971, when it was declared a sanctuary. In 1982, it became a national park, and in 1985, a World Heritage Site. The numerous resident birds, as well as migratory birds, which visit Bharatpur every year, include saras cranes, wagtails, warblers, painted storks, buntings, flycatchers, grey herons, geese and pelicans, beside a number of hawks.
Walking along the embankments of wetlands is one of the most exciting ways to enjoy the birds of Bharatpur. This is particularly suited to amateur and professional camera persons who arrive here in large numbers. If walking puts you off, then hop on to a cycle rickshaw to savor Bharatpur. You can even rent a bicycle and explore the area at your own pace. For us, taking like a breath of fresh air, so it's really nice, especially if we do it in, in this kind of bicycles and in this place, which is really lovely to cycling around and you can stop wherever you want, see the view, see the animals. With a bicycle, no problem at all. You can stop the environment, you keep the environment without any kind of problem. You keep your health safe. You make you a little bit fit also. So I think it's the best way. But there is a dark side to Bharatpur, which is worth mentioning. For over a hundred years, Bharatpur was synonymous with the Siberian crane. The elusive but spectacular cranes from Siberia would cover a distance of over 6,000 kilometers every winter to alight at Bharatpur. Sadly, Siberian cranes stopped coming to Bharatpur since December 2002. This was when the last bear was spotted. The real reason for their absence is still unclear. For the serious birders, this was certainly a setback. Considering that only 3,000 Siberian cranes are left in the wild, and for decades they were considered the flagship species of Bharatpur. Those pining for Siberian cranes still hope they would come to Bharatpur again. This may or may not happen. But they would all agree that to this day, Bharatpur remains the undisputed kingdom of birds. <laughs>